What's up everybody, Superdux fan here for another weekly update. So I'm not doing the car portion because there is a ton of news to go over. The Paris Motor Show is going on this week and so there is just an enormous amount of news to go over. And if you missed uh, the past two videos I posted just recently here in the past day, uh, I did a video on this Civic Type R concept that just unveiled as well as some spy shots of the 2018 Mustang. So those are the two big things really this week. And so I did separate videos on those things. This is the rest of all the other news going on and there's so much and there's nothing new with my Mustang so doing the driving portion didn't make sense this week so let's just get right into the news here the first thing is Audi has unveiled the new Audi RS3 which is spectacular and it's coming to the United States which is really really amazing news as well so this one we're finally getting 400 horsepower five cylinder two and a half liter turbocharged engine five cylinder so it's literally it's still the same great half of the Lamborghini V10 basically from the R8 as well uh, that you know is it sounds if you listen there's a video in the description below there's a link to it here in this video you can watch Audi's uh, footage of this thing driving around it sounds just like how it does in the TTRS where it sounds like a Lamborghini V10 engine it's amazing and so having that in this little sedan is really cool 400 horsepower power don't know a ton more about it um but you know all, all the same great looks you really got with the s3 just you know bumped up a notch here for the rs version and uh you know it, it gives you standard stuff like the virtual cockpit um you know gauge cluster and um should be very impressive. They're saying, I think, 4.1 seconds, 0 to 60 for this thing. And who knows about the price just yet once it comes to the States. But, uh, you know, for us over here, us Americans that are so starved for RS models, uh, I'm sure this is, uh, they'll pay whatever they want to charge for these things. So uh, very exciting to see that. Other Volkswagen Group news is that Volkswagen debuted their ID concept, which is this car that last week they were saying it could be like as big as the Volkswagen Beetle. I mean, like the next big thing and, you know, sell millions and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to arrive in 2020. It's this little hatchback thing and um, it's completely electric because, you know, after the whole diesel scandal, Volkswagen is like, all right, we're done with uh, normal mechanical engines. Let's just do electric stuff. And that's basically what they're doing. So they're, this thing is going to get 373 miles on the European test cycle. So the range will probably be a little bit less here for the States, but still, it's right up there with, you know, what we're going to see from the Chevy Bolt and, of course, from the Tesla Model 3 and stuff. So, uh, yeah, pretty, you know, impressive there as far as the range and stuff goes. And they're saying the on top of this thing arriving in 2020, they're saying a fully autonomous version of this car is going to arrive in 2025. And uh, so what you'll be able to see now, it's a very concept-y interior, but that steering wheel in the autonomous uh, mode would just telescope into the dashboard and disappear. And uh, otherwise, though, you know, since it doesn't have any other mechanical workings to really worry about, you have a lot of interior space for a small little car, which should make it very versatile. Um, apparently, it has some crazy augmented reality heads-up display and all kinds of other cool stuff. Um, and again, this is going to be on the MEB platform that Volkswagen is going to be using to electrify basically the entire lineup. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, impressive, you know, amount of range for that little thing. And um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. They said that by 2025, they want to sell. A a million EV cars a year, a million electric cars by 2025. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, very ambitious plans there, but uh, best of luck there to uh, Volkswagen. Some uh, less uh, green news, I guess I should say, is Ferrari has announced the LaFerrari Aperta, which we expected to come. It's the convertible version of the LaFerrari. And um, looks really great. It's just really a removable Targa top basic thing almost. And uh, they're going to make 209 of them. Nine they're going to keep for themselves and 200 they're going to sell to individuals. And of course they're already sold out in typical Ferrari fashion. And uh, yeah, you know, it looks exactly how you would expect a uh, you know, spider version of the LaFerrari to look. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Ferrari also announced that for their 70th anniversary here, they're going to be doing uh, f these five different special edition models for the current lineup. And uh, so they're going to have a total of 300 150 units set to be produced. Um so they're going to have these different things. They're going to have the Steve McQueen edition, which uh, is uh, going to have the same brown exterior and uh, tan interior on the California. They're going to have the Green Jewel, which is based on the 48, uh, you know, convertible there. They're going to have the Sterling, um, which is, uh, you know, going to be on the uh, F12. They're going to have the Schumacher, of course, in honor of Michael Schumacher and all his wins. And then the White Spider. So, uh, yeah, cool to see those. And, um, yeah, they're going to have these unique colors here for the 70th anniversary 
for these 350 models only, and then after that, that's it. So cool to see that. Some other uh, hypercar news is that Mercedes now, last week and a week before, they were mentioning how they're going to do an F1, a Formula One based hypercar. It's going to basically be a road legal version of their Formula One vehicle. And uh, so we have more details about this. Thanks to Autoblog, they sat down for an interview. And um, so, you know, we already knew that this is going to have a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, rear wheel drive, and a fast discharge electric hybrid system that's going to produce a grand total of about a thousand horsepower. So this 1.6 liter turbo engine um, is going to be a screamer, like an actual F1 screamer. They said it could, it's going to have, the uh, red line is going to be over 10,000 RPMs, probably closer to 11,000 RPM red line in a road car. It's going to be bonkers. And um, so they're saying the price could be uh, $2 million or a little under, and they're saying that it'll arrive in about two years or so. So very quick timeline there. And... Um, yeah, they said it's also going to have active aerodynamics and stuff, which might even make it higher performing than the Formula One car, because stuff like that isn't allowed in Formula One. So uh, pretty mind-blowing stuff here. And uh, so, yeah, not sure, you know, what it's going to end up looking like. We just have the one teaser image here that's very, very early sketch here. But uh, I'm sure it's going to be one heck of a car. So very exciting to hear more about that. Something that's purely a concept and not even remotely based in reality is this Renault Trezor concept, which is uh, this all-electric car that... Um, Again, will never get produced, and it's just a fun, uh, I guess, design study to kind of show where Renault could be headed with their design and whatnot. And um, looks really cool, uh, you know, very uh, Hot Wheels esque, I suppose. And uh, yeah, so uh, cool to see that. But like I said, not going to be anything on the streets anytime soon. Something that uh, could be on the streets uh, more soon, but looks just as crazy, is this Lexus UX concept, which is uh, a smaller little crossover that Lexus is pr most likely going to produce. It'll certainly be toned down a little bit from this, but probably not by much. But I don't know, Lexus concepts just keep getting crazier and crazier. This thing is really, you know, out of this world. Now, last week I talked about how the interior has these 3D holograms for the, uh, you know, some of the displays on the inside there. And I mean, it has like the wheel is embedded into the tire and, uh, you know, the seats look extremely uncomfortable there from the pictures. And uh, yeah, just it's very, very different. So, so I'm not sure when we're going to see any production version of that, but you know how hot crossovers are, I'm sure uh, it'll take them very little time to produce a production version of that. So cool to see that. Something else that's a little more uh, normal is Kia, uh, they just showed off a new turbo version of the Soul. It's going to be called the Soul SX. And it's going to have the same uh, turbo engine out of the Hyundai Veloster Turbo, which is the 1.6 liter turbo engine. Does the same amount of power, 201 horsepower. and. Um, 0 to 60, they're saying, could be 7.8 seconds, top speed of 124, and, uh, you know, might be available with a manual, but uh, definitely an automatic at least, and so we should be seeing that here next year in the States. Another thing, uh, that another little crossover, I guess you could call it, uh, is the BMW Concept X2, which uh, looks, uh, you know, pretty aggressive here, and it's uh, kind of trying to do a different design turn than the typical way that they do some of these mid-range uh, X models, so this is kind of based off the X1 crossover, but the sportier looking version, but it looks a lot wider and a lot diff more different than the X1 does, and um, looks pretty cool. I especially like the little uh, BMW roundel that they have there on the rear uh, quarter panel uh, roof line area there, and um, yeah, no, not any other details. This is you know basically just a design study. Uh, one interesting thing is the typical BMW grills seem to be uh, flipped upside down, so they're inverted there, and uh, it's, it gives it a little bit of a different look. I think it actually looks pretty good though. I gotta say, and um, they're saying that something like this could arrive, you know, by 2018, because um, again, everyone loves these crossovers, so they're just spitting them out as fast as they possibly can. It'll come with your typical assortment of engines you get probably in the normal X1, and uh, maybe some of the X3, X4 engines too, who knows, but uh, great to see that. Back to Mercedes and electric cars. They just showed off the Generation EQ concept, which is this uh, Tesla fighting all electric SUV. And this EQ line they're saying is gonna be like a subdivision of Daimler. And I'm not sure if it's gonna spawn away from Mercedes eventually or just still be under the Mercedes umbrella. But um, it's this EQ concept that's going to not only involve vehicles, but also like housing stuff and, you know, all the electric uh, grid and architecture type stuff, uh, similar to how Tesla wants to expand out. And so that's kind of what they're going for with this. And 
and um, so it's a pretty cool looking SUV here. A lot more, I guess, standard looking than a Model X. As far as power goes for this uh, SUV here, it's going to have 402 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque uh, with its um, you know electric motors here. It'll hit 0 to 62 in, uh, they're saying, 5 seconds or less than 5 seconds. And they're saying the range now on the European testing cycle, the range will be 311 miles. So probably a little less than 300 under the EPA ratings. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got, you know, 24 inch TFT high definition display with 3D digital interfaces and all kinds of, you know, high tech stuff like that. Again, still a concept car, so they can have fun with all that kind of stuff. But you know, just a sign of what we will hopefully see in the future. And um, yeah, so very impressive. And like I said, it's a really good looking thing, I gotta say. Another really good looking SUV that just debuted this past week was the 2018 Land Rover Discovery, which uh, looks really great and, you know, borrows a lot from the other uh, Land Rovers that all look fantastic, and so this one is no exception. Looks really great. It'll be available um, here in the States with either two rows or threes. So you're going to, you know, seat seven in one of these things, and uh, it's going to replace the LR4 uh, in naming as well. So, um, you know, it looks pretty good. They said that they've, you know, um, done a lot of uh, different stuff with body on frame architecture so that they've saved nearly a thousand pounds, so it's a lot lighter, and, uh, you know, so that should make it handle and drive better in addition to being more economical and whatnot. And um, so as far as engines for this thing go, um, they're going to have, you know, the standard uh, 3 liter, 340 horsepower supercharged V6 out of the base F type that's in the other Jags and uh, some of the other base Land Rover products. And so it uh, makes sense to have that. They're also going to have a 3 liter turbo diesel that makes 254 horsepower uh, that's also going to be available. And um, yeah, it's going to go on sale in the middle of 2017. It's going to be starting at 51000 bucks. So uh, pretty cool to see that. Another uh, little SUV that debuted this past week was the 2017 Jeep Compass, which looks like a mini Grand Cherokee. We just have a few pictures of it here, and it uh, looks really sharp, though, I gotta say. And, uh, you know, it'll be a great alternative for those that don't want the happy, rounded headlights of the Renegade for, you know, a similar price. I think this may be, you know, maybe a tiny bit more expensive, but on the same basic architecture, it's gonna have, you know, the same 9-speed automatic, probably the same engine options, you know, with maybe a turbo 2-liter 4-cylinder or the naturally aspirated 2.4-liter 4-cylinder engine. It'll have, you know, 4-wheel drive as an option or front wheel drive and um, it looks like there'll be a Trailhawk version as well based off the orange one here that's uh, pictured and uh, yeah we don't have any more details about it but we should see more of this you know at the LA Auto Show in November and uh, have you know some more details on it then. Next is a bunch of uh, cars that were spied this past week. So the first is Mercedes was spied testing their new S63 AMG, which uh, looks really good. They also were out, uh, out testing the new just standard S-Class. You know, it's due for a mid-cycle refresh already. And uh, so, you know, the S the AMG version, just the headlights aren't quite as different now on the standard silver S-Class that was tested there. Uh, it looks like it's going to have uh, some headlights that look more similar to the new E-Class headlights. Of course, probably uh, bumped up a notch since this is the top dog, the S-Class, and I'll, you know, advance it a little more. Otherwise, though, you know, maybe some changes to the front bumpers, rear bumpers, nothing huge. It's mostly probably just going to update all the tech and all the interior stuff uh, to keep it up to date since the E-Class currently, I think, has more tech than the S-Class does with how fast uh, technology is evolving. So updating it with all that kind of stuff is probably the main focus there. And so, yeah, but uh, great to see that. Another thing with spy testing is the new uh, BMW M4 facelift. So, again, same basic car, just a mid-cycle refresh that it's also do for here. Looks like it's going to have some slimmer, angrier looking headlights there that look pretty awesome in addition to a few other tweaks there on the front end and also some tweaks on the back end. We also see another one driving around with it here that you know has a spoiler and stuff that they're saying um, could be an M4 CSL or some type of uh, model that slots beneath the GTS and uh, not quite as extreme or as expensive uh, but still could be you know a little bit uh, more potent I suppose than the standard M4. So uh, cool to see that. Nissan this past week unveiled the 2017 GTR Nismo, which costs $176,585, which makes it well over $100,000 more expensive than the original R35 GTR that debuted here in the States back in 2009. And uh, so the same 600 horsepower as before, uh, better aerodynamics here for the 2017 model, and it gets the same other improvements for the uh, the interior that you know all 2017 GTRs get. And uh, you know, very impressive car still nonetheless. But I just I don't understand how it got so expensive and why they keep raising the price. It's like 10 grand more than last year. It's not I don't know. It's just it's kind of mind blowing. My brain does not understand it. But uh, cool to see uh, that they're continuing on with that car at least. Um, another thing that is uh, more expensive than 
expected is the new uh, Mazda Miata MX-5 RF launch edition here. So for those that might have missed the news about the uh, MX-5 Miata RF launch edition, this launch edition version is going to be in this special silvery brown color that it was unveiled at the New York Auto Show with the brown leather interior. And of course, the RF is the ret retractable folding Targa style hardtop. And uh, they're going to make a thousand of them, uh, but they're only going to first be available to loyal MX-5 owners. And uh, they'll have an opportunity to put down a deposit on one. And then if they don't take that opportunity, then the remaining cars will be made available to the public to pre-order. So they're going to be pretty expensive though. They're almost $9,000 more than a standard Miata. Uh, the launch edition here is going to be $34,685. Now that's just for the launch edition. I'm sure that the standard RF is going to be, you know, a little bit cheaper, but still pretty pricey there. And um, yeah, so hopefully it does come down a good bit for, you know, the standard version. One thing that is refreshingly affordable and cheap is the uh, 2017 Honda Civic hatchback pricing was just announced. And um, so, you know, it's pretty nice that, you know, the hatchback version that now joins the lineup with the coupe and sedan um, is still relatively affordable at right around 20,000 bucks. So the base one is $20,535, and that's with the 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, and it makes 174 horsepower and 167 pound-feet of torque, and you get a six-speed manual transmission with it, so pretty good, you know, and then if you want to jump up to the sport trim, it gives you 180 horsepower, uh, dual exhaust, 177 pound-feet of torque, and it's only $22,000, so it again it comes with a six-speed manual. You can get an automatic. It's a CVT for both. Why bother? Just stick with the manual, and then, you know, you're set. There are the more luxurious versions. That get more expensive as well but really great to see that honda kept the hatchback nice and affordable and a couple truck stories this week uh, the first is that ford confirmed the numbers that we heard last week about the uh, horsepower and torque numbers for the f-150 raptor it's going to have 450 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque as the leaked document suggested it would and uh, so ford has also released their epa fuel economy estimates it's going to get 15 miles per gallon in the city 18 on the highway and 16 for the combined average and they're proud of that because it's an improvement over the previous Raptor, but still 15 and then 18 on the highway is uh, so yeah, I mean, but it's 500 pounds lighter than the previous Raptor, of course. Uh, it's going to use the uh, twin turbo, uh, you know, V6 that's uh, been bumped up a good amount, uh, EcoBoost, and it's going to have the 10 speed automatic as well uh, that was co developed with GM. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the engine's, you know, the updated version of the uh, V6 EcoBoost that does, you know, twin and port fuel injection and uh, so yeah it's going to be for those that missed the pricing when it was announced 49,000 and a half uh, for the uh, super cab and then 52 and a half thousand bucks for the super crew so the cool to see that and uh, not to be outdone by ford uh ram this past week has unveiled the rebel trx concept which is uh just a concept it was unveiled at the texas state fair and looks very awesome very very aggressive and uh, the best thing about this rebel though is that it has a hemi 6.2 liter v8 engine supercharged that makes 575 horsepower and a lot of people are saying it's basically the hellcat motor detuned so maybe it's a little bit of tuning you can get this up to 707 horsepower as well and then you'd really have something crazy on your hands not that 575 isn't enough um, but especially for those that are you know upset about the fact that the raptor has gone with a v6 instead of the v8 this may be your solution. I don't see why Ram wouldn't build this. I feel like it's the right time, uh, and especially now with Ford giving up the V8. Having a supercharged V8 in this, I think, would uh, be preferable to a lot of truck enthusiasts. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully they will actually build that. But again, no guarantees for right now, just a concept. One thing that was officially unveiled was the Toyota CHR compact uh, crossover here, which is now they unveiled the Japanese version. Uh, we'll be getting an official unveil here probably at the LA Auto Show in November, is my guess, or in Detroit. Um, but what we do know is that it's going to be very hybridized uh, in Japan. They're going to have uh, hybrid versions only for this vehicle. Here in the States, we probably get a nationally aspirated version that just does the you know uh, non-hybrid 1.8 uh, four-cylinder um, and the CVT to go along with it. Uh, we may get some of the other engines that are turbocharged we there actually is you know rumors that it'll just basically be the prius powertrain with you know the hybrid uh, and the four cylinder put into this little uh, crossover which would be uh, exactly what americans want everyone wants a crossover these days and so it would be a uh, very cool especially if they're able to badge it as a prius somehow here for the states um but yeah that was the one that was originally supposed to be a scion and then they killed off scion so now they uh you know did a little bit of a few changes here to make it a toyota and uh, i think it looks pretty good and the last story this week is that Chevy has just unveiled the 2018 Chevy Equinox, um, which is going to be going on sale next spring. And um, the bravest 
thing about it. I mean, it looks good. You know, it's a larger, uh, more handsome looking uh, crossover than the one that came before it. And, um, you know, it's uh, going to be a nice improvement. But the craziest thing is you can get this with a diesel if you want. So it's going to be available with this diesel. It's a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder that does 136 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. But the big deal about this diesel, it's going to do 40 miles per gallon on the highway, supposedly, which... Uh, I mean, for an SUV is uh, really unheard of. So that'd be pretty impressive if they can actually um, get that done. And so, yeah, but that the diesel engine isn't going to be arriving until next summer, along with a more powerful four-cylinder. It does like 252 horsepower. Um, but to start off with, they're going to have the standard 170 horsepower four-cylinder in the spring, which I'm sure will be the volume leader. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it looks really great. It looks uh, like they really stepped up the interior as well uh, to match all the other very nice Chevy products that are currently out there. And so, yeah, it looks pretty good. But anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. Uh, like I said, there might be a few other uh, Paris stories that will come out after the filming of this is done. Um, so be sure to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news stories on there as they're happening, at SuperDorksFan on Twitter. So be sure to follow me on there if you want to stay up to date on all the automotive news. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.